I am Shyam Mishra, the host of Law and Life. I will be having conversation with the senior advocate of Supreme Court of India, Subodh Markande ji, on concern the recently movie release, The Kashmiri Files. So, the, my first question is: The Kashmiri Files, directed by Vivek Agnotri, has become the biggest blockbuster and create, created unprecedented controversies. Kunwar Das Ali, Amroha MP, belonging to BSP, Badruddin Ajmal, former MP from Assam, had demanded the film to be banned. So, what's your view on that? the film was cleared by the uh, censor board no appeal was preferred by these gentlemen against the uh, order clearing the film nor indeed the british these gentlemen moved the central government in exercise of its revisional powers the mumbai high court has on judicial considerations refused to stay the release of the film we should respect all these processes the film is facing classification issues in new zealand i have myself seen the movie and i can dare say that it does not fall within any of the exceptions contained in clause 2 of article 19 therefore constitutionally its ban will be on very shaky ground as a film enthusiast all i can say is that it's a very poignant film with very powerful direction and stellar acting it unmasks an ugly face of genocide of kashmiri pandits by most despicable means anyone having slightest consideration for human rights would unhesitatingly condemn what happened to the pandits of kashmir in the strongest terms irrespective of who was responsible for it moreover the film is an exercise of the fundamental right of right to freedom of speech and expression which is guaranteed by article 191a of our constitution any ban would not only infringe the fundamental right of the director of the film to showcase his creative genius but the fundamental rights of millions of viewers who have made it such a resounding success these are weighty considerations which cannot be lightly brushed aside in the recent past in less compelling situations the supreme court has refused to stay the release of jodha akbar padmavati bajirao mastani etc where is the question of banning the film so this raises to me the next question haven't some outstanding book be banned how do your views on anomaly in the courts concern yes some very remarkable works of literature faced such an outcome satanic verses and lajja are some of the works which immediately come to my mind under rajiv gandhi's government india was perhaps the first country to ban salman rushdie's work threats and fatwas were freely banded inside and outside the country against salman rushdie taslima nasrin's book was also unjustly banned and she was also assaulted unfortunately no court came to the rescue of the cause of freedom of speech and expression <clears> or <throat> nasrin's life there were no sua moto cognizance no midnight hearings of such brazen violation of these precious rights even justice we k krishna iyer we are krishna iyer india's universally acclaimed former supreme court judge has criticized the supreme court as well as the congress and marxist government of kerala for their role in banning the rashti's work and a malayalam play based on it in that connection justice ayer even called into question the laudatory remarks of the eminent justice jurist f s nariman uh, for our supreme court and termed those words as i quote we bit exaggerated which forces played such a diabolical role sir It is well known that for securing a 
ban on the works of Rushdie and Nasreen, the fundamentalists played a very active role. It's an uncomfortable fact that no government, central or state, had the courage to withstand the pressure mounted by the fundamental fundamentalists inside and outside India, particularly from West Asia. Voices in media opposing such a ban were either non-existent or too muffled and feeble. No court ever attempted to come to the rescue of lakhs of readers who wanted to read these books in exercise of their minimum constitutional right to freedom of speech and expression. It's a case of denial by courts to interfere in the en masse infringement of Indian citizens' right to freedom of speech and expression, which they had secured after a very hard and long struggle. Sir, with this, it led to the final question of the day. In the scale of values of the government, media, civil society, human rights, groups, where does the right of freedom of speech and expression stand? Such generalization is difficult to answer, but let me try. After all, in spite of the award claim of the first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, to be the guardian angel of civil liberties, it is his government which brought within a year of the inauguration of the Constitution, the First Amendment to our Constitution, severely curtailing Article 19, banning books and gagging the press. I need not add anything more to what Justice Krishna has said. Civil society, media, human rights groups, etc., etc., were all silent when genocide of Kashmiri Pandit was actually happening, as indeed they were silent at the time of onslaught on satanic verses and lajja and fatwas were issued for death of authors of these works. So it is safe to conclude that in the scale of values of media, civil society and human rights activists, freedom of speech and expression does not appear, does appear to be very low. Thank you for having us such a great food session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Shashank.